Okay. Meeting is a live stream. Okay. Live stream. Uh huh. Okay. Let's go ahead and share. Okay. From the start. All right. The time is now 6.35. Good evening oh, once again dead. to everyone. Happy <clears throat> Wednesday evening. So glad that all of you have chosen to take time out of your Wednesday evening to join us for Bible study. It's a privilege and an honor to be before you. Um, and I'm excited about our lesson for this evening. Our opening scripture. Um, before I go to the opening scripture, uh, uh, just a reminder for those who are um, streaming via Zoom and also those who are streaming via Facebook Live, go ahead and share this Bible study with your with those that are in your friend network. Let them know that Temple Baptist Church is live. Bible study is happening. All right. Our opening scripture for this evening reads in this wise. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in him so that you may overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. That is found in Romans chapter 15, excuse me, verse number 13. Let us be together with God and one another as we go before the Lord in a word of prayer. Merciful Father, we thank you, Lord, for this day that you have made in which we will truly rejoice and be glad. Thank you for our last night's slumber. Thank you for our early rise this morning. Thank you for keeping us, even when we didn't want to keep ourselves. Thank you for being a God who specializes in things impossible. You are the God that's able to keep us, to sustain us. And for that, we're thankful. Now, God bless us as we begin to dive into your word and continue in this series on the cost of discipleship. Let's all that will be said and done. You get the glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen and amen. All right. Again, the chat box is open on both Zoom and Facebook Live. Um, feel free to ask your questions or say amen to something that really stuck with you. Uh, feel free to uh, say amen or you know, interact with your fellow sisters and brothers um, in the chat. All right, so today, tonight rather, we are continuing our Bible study lesson. The series is entitled The Cause of Discipleship. And so tonight, we're looking at the rules for discipleship, the need to watch. Follow me in your Bible, sisters and brothers, to the gospel according to Luke, chapter number six, verses 39 through 45. You might blink and this Bible study will be done. <laughs> I promise we will not tarry too long tonight. The gospel according to Luke chapter six, verses 39 through 45. By way of introduction, we, you and me, are to watch how we live. I know that's heavy for introduction, but it is the truth. 
we, man and woman, are to watch how we live. Both the quality and fate of our lives depend on it. Okay? The quality and fate of our lives depend upon how we monitor or watch, if you will, how we live. God cares about the quality of our lives. God cares about the quality of our lives. Type that in the comments, if you will. God cares about the quality of my life. He cares about the quality of my life. He wants every person to have the fullest life that we possibly can. The word of God even reminds us that he came that we might have life and have it more abundantly. So he wants us to have the fullest life that we possibly can. Secondly, he cares about my destiny. Please type that in the card. We're going to be working. So ho hopefully you, you got your texting fingers or your working fingers ready. Please put that in the comments as well. He cares about our destiny. He cares about where we will spend eternity. He wants all of us to have eternal life. He, he loves us so much that he wants us to have eternal life. There are four rules, warnings, if you will, that must be watched. And this is how our text for tonight is divided. This is how our text for this evening is divided. There are four rules, warnings that must be watched. And this is how the text is broken down. Number one, we need to watch blindness. This is verse 39. Blindness where? Among leaders and followers. Secondly, we must watch the teacher, the Lord, if you will. That's verse 40. Number three, we need to watch hypocrisy and criticism of others. Watch hypocrisy and criticism of others. That's verses 41 and verse 42. Then we wrap up by looking at watch the fruit. Watch the fruit that a man or woman brings forth. That's what he wants us to do, right? So these are the four warnings, four rules, if you will, that must be watched. So this is how our text is broken down. Let's begin. Spiritual blindness, darkness. The first rule is to watch blindness. Watch one's leaders and how one leads. Let me say that again. Watch one's leaders and how one leads. I saw a quote today that really blessed me before <clears throat> I go into verse uh, 39. The quote was, if you don't trust your leader, that's not your leader. Presiding Bishop J. Drew Sheard is the author, the quotee, I think that's an adequate word, the quotee, the one who <laughs> gave that quote. If you don't trust your leader, that is not your leader. We're we coming out heavy tonight. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we are. <laughs> All right. So 
Uh, again, the first rule is to watch for blindness. Watch one's leaders and how one leads. Can the blind lead the blind? Mm -hmm. Look at verse 39. And he spoke a parable to them. Can the blind lead the blind? Will they not both fall into the ditch? This is verse uh, 39. This is verse 39. All right. So the first question, who are the blind? They are the leaders, the preachers, teachers, parents, anyone who has influence or responsibility for anyone else. In fact, any person can be blind and lead someone else down the same path to blindness. But let's observe a very critical fact. Jesus also says that the blind are those who follow the pupil, the learner, the listener, the seeker, the child. Anyone who looks up to someone else for guidance. Here are some clear reasons why people are blind. Here are some clear reasons why people are blind. Number one, a person can be born blind. They can be handicapped, never having had the opportunity to see the truth of things, never having been exposed to the light. Another reason a person can be blind. A person can be blind due to an injury. They used to be able to see and had every opportunity to see, but now they are blind because they injured themselves by some careless act. They were blinded by someone else either deliberately or carelessly, they were blinded by nature, circumstance, heritage, location, if you will, kept them from having the opportunity to escape the darkness. Now watch this. A person can be blind because they want and choose to be in the dark. Okay. The darkness is their choice. They find the darkness to be enjoyable and comfortable. Therefore, they refuse to come into the light and see the truth of things. Okay? Okay. Also, Person can be blind because they choose his eye or turns his head and looks away. They simply refuse to see the light or the truth. So they'll turn, they'll close their eyes and turn their back and look away. Jesus, sisters and brothers, warned against being blind. He said that blindness leads to two tragic results. Tragic Johnson, if you will. Both walk in darkness. That's the leader and the follower. Being a leader does not guarantee that one walks in the light. Let me say that again. Let me not skip past that. Being a leader 
does not guarantee that one walks in the light. A leader can be blind. And if the leader is blind, then the followers will remain blind. Hmm. Good God Almighty. Hmm. <laughs> the leader must see and have his sight if the follower is to ever see. The leader must have his sight if the follower is to ever see. Secondly, both stumble, and that's this is right here in the text. Both stumble and fall into the ditch. Mm -hmm. Now watch this. Being a leader does not guarantee that one will not fall. Just because you take on the role of a leader doesn't necessarily guarantee that you, that you won't fall, that you won't fail, that you won't make mistakes. The blind person will stumble and fall no matter who they are, leader or not. Watch this. A leader will especially stumble about and fall if they are on strange or unfamiliar territory. You can stumble and fall if you are on strange and unfamiliar territory. The truth of Christ is totally unknown territory to the blind, no matter their profession. Look at what the Bible says in 2 Timothy chapter 4, verses 3 and 4. We're living in those times right now. It says, for the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lust shall they keep, shall they heap to themselves teachers having itching ears. I was talking to somebody about that earlier this week. And they shall turn away their ears from the truth and shall be turned into fables. We must be careful, sisters and brothers. Now, so we talked about the first rule. Let's look now at rule number two. Let's look at rule number two. Self-denial, dedication. <coughs> Watch the life of the teacher. Watch the life of the teacher. Verse 40. A disciple is not above his teacher, but everyone who is perfectly trained will be like his teacher. This is in the book. I'm not making this up, I promise you. The second rule is to watch the life of the teacher. The of the Lord Jesus Christ himself. The word perfect in this text means to complete, render fit, or mend. It is a common word often used for mending, repairing, or restoring broken things such as nets, Matthew 4.21, or mend. Galatians 6, verse 1. The point here, sisters and brothers, is forceful. The disciple is not above his master. The disciple, that would be us, is not better than the Lord. Right. A disciple is not better than the Lord. You are not better than the Lord. Therefore, you cannot expect to be treated better, nor can you expect to receive more in this world than the Lord. 
The disciple cannot expect to be better by having more honor, more praise, more recognition, more esteem. You can't expect to have more comfort, rest, or pleasure. The Lord suffered, humbled, and denied himself for the sake of the world and its needs. The Lord suffered. I've harped on that for some time. I can't stress the importance of that. He suffered, humbled himself, and denied himself for this entire world and for our need. We needed a savior. The disciple as a follower of the Lord does the same. We deny ourselves in order to reach the world for the Lord Jesus. We must deny ourselves, crucify our flesh. The goal of the disciple is to be as his master. The disciple seeks to be like the master, conformed, mended, repaired, restored into his very image. Right? Okay. So that's where we are. Now, here we are with rule number three. <clears throat> Criticism and hypocrisy. We are to, the third rule is to watch hypocrisy and criticism of others. Let's look at verses 41 and 42. The Bible says, and why do you look at the speck in your brother's eye, but do not perceive the plank in your own eye? Mm. Or how can you say to your brother, brother, let me remove the speck that is in your eye when you, when you yourself do not see the plank that is in your own eye? Hypocrite. <clears throat> First, <clears throat> Remove the plank from your own eye. And then you will see clearly to remove the speck that is in your brother's eye. So this is rule number three. Watch hypocrisy and the criticism of others. Note a critical fact. Jesus was speaking to everyone seated before him. No matter how moral, decent, strong, religious, or free of visible sin, he was speaking to everybody sitting in the audience. Not a single soul was exempt. Everyone was to watch out for hypocrisy and criticism of others. Why? Because whatever is in a person's eye, even if it's only a speck, is serious. Even a speck causes the eye to water, squint, blink, and close. The speck hinders a person's sight, their life and their walk, holding them back from full sight and service. Look at these four points about this parable. Both persons do have a problem. Both have to need, have a need to clean the dirt out of their eyes. Neither one is free of dirt. Not a single person serves in perfect obedience and ministry to the Lord. Mm -hmm. Let me say that again. Come on, come on. Not a single person, the nine of you 
also that are on Facebook and the 28 of you that are here in this Zoom space. Not a single one of us serves in perfect obedience and ministry to the Lord. There is at least a speck, crust, if you will, in everybody's eyes. <laughs> Get that crust out your eyes. <laughs> Secondly, second point. The criticizer has the biggest problem. This is usually overlooked. Criticism of others is a beam. If one has only a speck in his eye, when he begins to criticize others, he immediately catches a beam in his own eye. What am I saying? Criticism is the tree that strikes the eye and blinds one to his own need, his need for continued confession and repentance. The criticizer becomes blinded to their constant need for the righteousness of Jesus Christ. There's Bible for that. Second Peter chapter one, verse nine says, but he that lack of these things is blind and can't see afar off and have forgotten that he was purged from his old sins. Point number three. The criticizer is a hypocrite. Everybody type hypocrite in the comments. They're like, why are they typing hypocrite in the comments? <laughs> Everybody type hypocrite in the comments, please. Criticizer is a hypocrite. For bonus points, I'm going to see who put it in exclamation points. No, I'm kidding. The criticizer is a hypocrite. He is but a man who is like all others, full of ever so many faults and coming ever so short. Yet he finds fault with others. They criticize, grumble, gripe, condemn, judge, be all up in the group chats, be all up on the phone for one and two hours. They censor others while they too are guilty of so much in so many other areas. That's why we say at communion, the communion scripture, but let a man examine himself. Let him examine himself. Examine yourself. Turn that mirror around on you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And let me tell you what their greatest fault is. Is that they set themselves up as the judge, as the one who has the right to judge men. And you have no right. Fourth point, the disciple must examine himself first. Examine yourself. Type that in the comments, please. Examine yourself. Examine yourself. Judging yourself first will enable you to see clearly just how, watch this, to help others. Rig, rigid examination is required. Simple honesty and thought say that a man must clean the dirt out of their own eye before they can see clearly enough to help others clean their eyesight. Clean the crust, the, the eye boogers, clean it all up out of your ears. Last thing, and we're done. 
fruit bearing words. So tongue. This is verses 43, 44, and 45. The final warning, the final rule. Watch the fruit that we bring forth. Watch the fruit that we bring forth. Every tree is known by its fruit, its nature, if you will. A good man is not judged by a bad piece of fruit here and there, but by the good fruit that they bear. Every tree produces some bad fruit, yet the tree is not cast away. A tree is not rejected unless it leans toward bad fruit. When testing and examining men, we must observe not single acts here and there, but the tenor, the lean, the whole behavior of our lives. That is very important. Every tree reproduces after its kind. How can we tell if a man is false? There is one revealing mark, the fruit that he gathers. We are known by the fruit we feed upon and the fruit we feed to others. If we feed ourselves on thorns and thistles and not on grapes and figs, that is one way to tell. If we feed thorns and thistles to others instead of grapes and figs, that is another way to tell. Thorns and thistles are false food, worldliness, if you will. Grapes and figs are true food. There is only one true food for the soul of man, the Lord Jesus Christ and his word. We must feed on and feed others the truth of God and his word. Any other source of food for the human soul is false food. If eaten or served to others, those thorns and thistles will choke the life out of the soul. Every man reproduces what's in his heart. Note that Jesus is dealing with a man's mouth. The words a man speaks. We must speak what is in the, our heart. His words expose his heart, the kind of person they are. The idea is that words come out of an overflowing heart. Bible says out of the abundance of the heart, the overflow, if you will, the mouth speaks. A man's words, and we're done, exposes five things about them. Man's words expose five things about them. A man's words expose their true nature, what they are really like beneath the surface. Someone shows you who they are, believe them the first time. A man's words Expose, excuse me, excuse me. A man's words expose what he is down deep in their heart. It exposes your motives, your desires, your ambitions, or the lack of initiative. 
Words are very, very important. Right. A man's words expose their true character. Your words expose your true character. A man's words expose their mind. What he thinks. The Bible says as a man thinks in his heart, so is he. Finally, a man's words expose his spirit. What he believes, what he pursues. The true, the false. The beneficial, the wasteful. Matthew 7, 17 says, Even so, every good tree brings forth good fruit. But a corrupt tree brings forth evil fruit. Sour, sour fruit. All right. I told y'all you was going to blink and we was done. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So as we wrap up tonight, I hear three things from the text that I certainly pray you've taken with you that'll help you more understand what's going on in the, these particular passages of scripture. First thing, the importance of guidance and leadership. In this text, Jesus shares the parable of the blind leading the blind, illustrating the need for proper guidance and leadership. This teaches us to seek out wise, knowledgeable, and spiritually mature leaders to guide us and to ensure <clears throat> that we ourselves are prepared and equipped before leading others. Second uh, thought that we can ponder. Self-examination before judging others. Verses 41 through 42 emphasize the need to first examine and address our own faults before pointing out the flaws in others. This lesson highlights the importance of humility and self-awareness. It teaches us to focus on our own growth and improvement rather than being quick to criticize your neighbor. Third lesson. The relationship between the heart and our actions. The last three verses, Jesus explains that a tree is known by its fruit and that a good person produces good out of the goodness stored in their heart. This teaches us that our actions and words reflect the true state of our heart. It encourages us to cultivate a pure and good heart, knowing that our inner character will naturally produce positive and righteous actions. Amen. 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 So as we look ahead to next week, we will certainly have Bible study the day before the 4th of July. Okay. All right, so next week we will look at the Messiah's commission to his disciples. We'll be looking at Matthew chapter 10, verses 5 through 15. Thank you all. Thank you all for uh, indulging me this evening. I know some of y'all are probably thinking, my pastor sound like that. Is he okay? Yes, I'm fine. <laughs> I'm good. <laughs> I'm good. <laughs> thank you for your thank you for your prayers. Thank you for your concerns. I'm all right. Just a little, just a little, you know, a little head cold, I think, but I'm good. Amen. All Amen. right. So this weekend, 
We've got a we've got a pretty packed weekend ahead of us. Mm -hmm. um, on Saturday, on Saturday is our flea market from 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. I'm asking mm -hmm. everyone, everyone, Lottie, Dottie, everybody to mm -hmm. support this flea market on Saturday. The weather's going to be amazing. There's no heat warning. So we should be good. Um, we should be good for Saturday. Um, calling all men um, to meet at the church at 8 o'clock to help the ladies set up, help them to set up their tables and whatever else needs to be set up. And then on Sunday, then on Sunday, after morning worship, we are heading to Baltimore, Maryland, to Mount Hebron Baptist Church for their fellowship service. And so I'm thanking all of you who signed up to get on the bus. Um, it's going to be an absolutely phenomenal weekend of worship and fellowship. And um, I ask that you would continue to keep me in your prayers as I continue to do what God has called and purposed for me to do. All right. Our hearts and minds are clear. We are going to just depart from this virtual space. Let's go before the Lord in a word of prayer. Kind Father, we thank you. We thank you for this teaching that you've allowed us to embark upon this evening. God, help us to be more like you yes. in the way we walk, in the way we talk, in the way we live. We don't always dot every I. We don't always cross every T. But God, we thank you that your faithfulness upon us is still on us. Thank you for keeping us. Thank you for your hand of protection that continues to uh, be on us. We ask God that you would help us in our areas of weakness, God. When we want to do or say something that isn't pleasing in your sight, help us, God to redirect our focus onto you, God. In all our ways, God, we want to acknowledge you so that you can direct our path. Now bless us as we depart from this virtual space, but never dismissing from your presence. We ask God that you would keep us safe, keep us covered uh, as we as we go on, go about our busy lives, God. We ask that you would protect us from hurt, harm, or danger. We come against any car accidents. We come against any car mishaps, God. We thank you that your goodness and your mercy continues to follow us all the days of our lives. Now, God, bless us and we shall be blessed. Keep us and we shall be kept. The Lord bless you. The Lord keep you. The Lord, make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May he lift up the light of his countenance all around you. As you matriculate through the rest of this week, may he give you, 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 and you too. May he give you peace. In the precious, holy, wonderful, majestic name of Jesus, we pray. We all come off mute together. We say together, amen. 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 All right. Y'all have a wonderful evening. You too, amen. and take care. You stay and Lord willing, I will see you all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for your prayers. I appreciate you. Lord Lord Lord, see you all Bye. this week. Good night. Good night, everyone. Good night. Good night everyone. A lot of fluids. Yep. Yes. <laughs>